Hello, this is Bishop McClendon. I am sitting here with two brothers and friends, members of Full Harvest, a part of the whole Place of Grace project. I'm sitting here with none other than Derek Watkins, also known as Fonsworth Bentley, and David yes. Anthony Howard. Of course, Derek Watkins, everyone knows him. He is a television personality, host, entertainer, entrepreneur, musician, singer, songwriter, <laughs> advocate, college campus uh, lecturer. God's doing a lot of things through you. And I, I say Thank that uh, not uh, casually, I mean, I've watched what God is doing with you and I'm yeah. pleased with it. And then of course, David Anthony Howard, who is a entrepreneur, businessman, restaurateur, uh, has his hands in a lot of uh, business uh, matters and God is using these young men in powerful ways. They're both members of Full Harvest, the Place of Grace, and both of them uh, have connected with mm -hmm me in not only the place of grace, thank God we are moving toward our facility, but the Daniel Project. And one of the things the Spirit of the Lord made very clear to me was that as a part of the place of grace and as a part of us moving into our worship facility, yeah. we were to designate a portion of the facility for the Daniel Center. Yeah. The Daniel Center being the area where the learning tutorial, etiquette element will be for our young men, ages 12 to 18, and then uh, the gentleman's quarter, the second stage of that, uh, from 19 to uh, about 39. You know, the Daniel Project was formerly known as Daniel's Posse, but it, it began in me uh, one day when I was reading the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. I was reading Daniel, you know, chapter one, and I was alerted by the fact that when Nebuchadnezzar overthrew Jerusalem, he took all the best, the Bible says, Daniel 1 says, he took all the best young men right. uh, of, of, of God's chosen people mm -hmm. and put them in the employ of the king. He fed them with Babylonian food, dressed them uh, with Babylonian apparel, and then the Bible says he gave them Babylonian names. I mean, mm -hmm. and I was reading it one day and it hit me that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm. who we know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that wasn't their real names. Mm. It was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that we actually know them by their Babylonian names, right. not by their Jewish names, because they had been named by the culture. The Daniel Project uh, came alive in me. And so we, you know, we would take all the young men who were turning 12, that year, we'd pray for them, take them through mentorship and all types of other things. And God really began to bless uh, that work to the point now I've got some of those young men, they're football players, and they still write me and say, you know, uh, Bishop, that time was a very strategic and significant time in our lives, and it helped us become the men we are today. As I look at the culture right now, what's right. happening in the society, never uh, before have I sensed such an urgency to start getting these young men, especially inner city young men, mm. men of color, African Americans, Latinos, especially urban young men, and begin instilling them with the things that are required to make them successful men. Well, the number one reason is I truly believe that uh, the reason that we're having this problem, the main reason is there is a, there's an identity crisis. Yeah. Uh, and I think that um, yes, I'm an African-American man, but before I'm an African-American man, I'm a man of God. Yeah. And so when I identify myself from that perspective first, then everything that I do will come with that force and with that type of intention. Got it. And so um, I think that hmm. we're living in a time where we are bombarded with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so many different images, images yeah. to inform you on not only who you are or what you should be or what you should be after or what is the benchmark yeah. instead of looking to the epicenter and the origin, which is what I believe is Jesus Christ. And, and one of the things uh, I also found really interesting just about Daniel is, you know, the Bible talks about that he came into the decision on his own. And a lot of times uh, you'll have parental influences, you'll have other influences and other group influence that will try to dictate and tell you that you should act a certain way or do things in a certain way. And one of the cool things about Daniel, he decided that. So yeah. he decided in his own being, yeah. right. this is what I'm gonna do. 
and yeah. I'm going to do it because I know that there's a reward on the other side of that. And, you know, that's not succumbing to pressures of society and different things that people can get trapped into. And it's really about being your own man and as yeah. a very young man um, and deciding that earlier. We are now living in a society where a majority of young men are being raised in matriarchal homes, mm -hmm. in homes raised by women. And there's nothing wrong with that. Women are anointed of God, they can do tremendous things. But I'm finding more and more young women, especially Christian women, are saying, my boys need male role models. They mm -hmm. need someone to help instill certain things. And I'm not just talking about Bible verses. I'm talking right. about, yeah. you know, how to dress, right. how, exactly. how to comb your hair, right. how, exactly. how to, you know, do things for an interview. These are all things that we want to deal with in the Daniel Project. And what I found, Fonz, I found that a majority of these young men, we're talking about, you know, making that decision on their own. Right. Right. Well, well, they haven't had anybody put in any, right. anything into them so they can make these decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, David, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What do you see as one of the basic fundamental needs right now of young men coming up in, in this modern culture? Well, one of the basic fundamental needs that I see, and we, we kind of touched on it earlier, was the focus on entrepreneurship and what that really means, um, particularly as it comes to the space of interactive media and digital media. That is the predominant way that the culture is communicating and is oftentimes the only and single influence and source to where they get all their information. Yeah. And it's really about the people from start to finish, really, uh, the young boys that not only can create the ideas, but can devise the tools to build the ideas and distribution networks to transmit those ideas. Um, being in a position to where they actually are the architects of that and are on the receiving end of that as well. So that we are actually instilling in them uh, how those methods are controlled and how that information is. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so we're so we're what we're we're raising up men who are not dependent. Mm -hmm. Right. Who are? How, how would you how would you address that? Well, well, well this is what I say. Um, the one thing I found that's so powerful about etiquette is etiquette basically makes you comfortable in all social Settings. situations. Yeah. And the reason that's powerful is because. Once you do have a revelation of yourself as a man of God, once you do, you are getting the books, you are getting the education, you, you are extending your faith. The reality is a lot of the relational capital and the people that you'll need to meet in order to get those things to manifest in your life are yeah. going to be out of your comfort zone. Yeah. But if you, very good. But if you don't feel comfortable going into a place where there's a white dinner table, cloth and there's all of this different silverware. Or if you don't feel comfortable being around uh, where you're the only one that looks like you yeah. in the room, <laughs> right. if you don't feel comfortable in that social situation, everybody, first of all, is going to be able to tell, right. and you're not going to go to that place, but the very place that he wants you and the very person that you need to meet right. is right there. And, right. I, and, 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 and that even if be, you get in there, you're right. not coming out with what you need because right. exactly. you were just talking about etiquette. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, listen, there's nothing wrong with having your, your pants sagging and your hat cocked to the side if that's what you want to do. But there are certain rooms you can't go into like that. Right. And if you go into them like that, you're not going to come out with what you, as a matter of fact, you won't even be invited to certain rooms <laughs> right. like right. that. Now, and, and so if you can't make those changes, make those, and that's one of the things the Daniel Project is going to be about, not just instilling Bible verses. No, we're talking about etiquette. We're talking mm -hmm. about how to dress, how to prepare for an interview, how to, uh, uh, how to you know, we're going to have computer learning and skill sets, mm -hmm. tutorials, etiquette. I've even... I'm even talking to you know some entertainers like yourself, some athletes and others, to come in and speak into these young men's lives and help them understand what is required uh -huh. to get from point A to point B and to enjoy the journey. But we're beginning with these young men because the Bible teaches that the male, the man is the head. And that literally means the handle or the seizable part. When God is getting ready to correct things, he picks it up by the handle. So he starts dealing right. with men. Yeah. He starts dealing with the male. I believe if we can get our hands on this generation of young men, we can begin to change something in the culture. If we don't do something now uh -huh. to get the young 
inner city men, African-American young men, if we don't do something, Latino young men, if we don't do something to begin to give them a sense of who they are right. uh -huh. and not let the news media, uh -huh. the police uh -huh. department, we pray for the police, but not let anyone else define them, uh -huh. but give them the equipment through yeah. the gospel and through these other tools to define them. If we don't do that, we're gonna lose a generation right. uh -huh. of young men. And if we lose a generation of young men, there really is very little hope for the culture. Now that's why I'm asking you, that's why yeah. Derek and David and uh, 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 other young men, we're asking you to help us yes. and to sow into the place of grace and to sow into the Daniel Center. Be it a thousand dollar seat, five hundred dollar seat, two hundred dollar seat, one hundred, whatever it is, every dime of it is going in to the work of the kingdom. So on behalf of souls, on behalf of a generation of young men, uh, Fonsworth Bentley, David, myself, we're asking you to help the Daniel Center, the Daniel Project at the Place of Grace.